What is going on? Welcome to another Beyond Plug and Play video. I am your host, Logic Motion. It is April 1st, April Fools. So there's going to be a lot of wacky stories probably this upcoming week, but today's stories are good. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into the first story of this week. Okay, so the first story is from Red Hook Studios, which are the developers of Darkest Dungeon. They say that the gold rush is over. Big Game Pass and Epic exclusive deals have dried up for indie devs. So what it seems to be is that Epic Game Store and Xbox Game Pass was a shortcut for indie devs to kind of get more funding. So you put your game on Epic Game Store and you make it exclusive. Epic gives you a little bit of money. Game Pass, you, you throw your game on Game Pass. Xbox gives you a little bit of money. And it seemed like that was a shortcut for these indie devs because you know, it's a small team. They don't have as much money as these AAA studios. So it was it was a profit for them. They saw it as a benefit. And we kind of suspected it to be the case because we saw it time and time again with games. They wouldn't show up on Steam, but they would show up on the Epic Game Store. We'd have to wait a year. Uh, example, Sifu. That was one of the games I was really excited for. Turned out it was an Epic Game exclusive. I personally bought it. I bought it just because I wanted to play. You know, I'm I don't want to wait a year. And at that time, we didn't even know if it was going to be a year, right? Uh, there's still some games that haven't come to Steam, uh, Kingdom Hearts, right? So, you know, I, I get it for smaller games. I don't really get it for AAA games because. You know, you're you're gonna make more money on Steam most of the time, and then you could just put it in both places. But maybe for some games, the deal was just so crazy that they're like, oh yeah, we'll take it. We'll release it on Steam a year later and we'll make we'll make our money either way. But uh, I'm kind of happy that this is the case. The well is dried up. The gold rush is over just because that means games will be in all places now. I don't have to wait a year. I don't have to wait six months. I don't have to wait, you know, just like this weird whatever. Like uh, now I'll just be getting the games uh, at the same time. If it's like an indie game, at least this might still end up being the case for AAA games. Uh, we'll see if this is truly over. I'm really happy about it. Well, recently, Phil Spencer, the Microsoft CEO of gaming, had an interview with Polygon and they asked him on the possibility of seeing other storefronts on the Xbox. So other storefronts as in Steam, other storefronts as in Epic. And he just gives a yes. <laughs> so. The idea of having Steam on an Xbox would be crazy. And I mean, just I mean, just think of the idea, right? You already have your Steam account with all your games in your library from from the years. And you take that and you put it on the Xbox. Oh, man, that would be that would be amazing. Uh, I, I don't know if it would be that easy to set up, but that would just that would be crazy. Same with Epic Games. You know, if you bought games on there, it could be the same with GOG. Xbox has got to get back on the map and maybe a bold decision like this is one way to do it. I feel like just, you know, opening up your console, uh, putting other storefronts on there. That's really consumer friendly. That's that's great. Um, I don't I don't know how it will pan out, but I, I can't see this going wrong. So if they ever decide to put Steam on the Xbox or Epic or even just all the other storefronts, I think it'll be a, a good idea. I don't know how games are going to run. I know the Xbox is similar to a PC, but it's not one to one. So uh, we'll see. Here's uh, here's another funny article. It's you can't sue us for making games too entertaining, say major game developers in response to addiction lawsuits. So Microsoft, Rockstar, Epic and others are being sued for using addictive psychological features in games like Minecraft, GTA 5 and Fortnite. So I do kind of think there is a, a little bit of a case here, maybe not in the terms of addiction, but maybe in the terms of fear of missing out, because I know with some things on Fortnite, they don't come back or it takes them like two or three years to come back or you can only get them in the battle pass. So that could be seen as like a fear of missing out. You'll never get these items again. So that means I have to. I have to buy this now, I have to play this now, or I won't be able to ever get this again. I can see that being as, that being maybe in the line of addictive, just because it's like, okay, well, if I don't play, then I don't get this item. So I'm gonna try to play every single day until I get this item, because this item is never gonna come back in Fortnite, right? Maybe you have a case for GTA 5 too, maybe the shark cards, like you can't stop yourself from buying shark cards because you always want to have like all the new stuff that releases in GTA 5. There's an argument to be made there. Maybe there's an argument to be made for Minecraft. Like I, 
I don't know what type of monetization they have in Minecraft because I, you know, I, I've played it on PC and everything that you want to do, you could literally just do it through mods, but the game might be a totally different on uh, Xbox. Fun factor, you know, Minecraft's been a long, it's been around a long time. It's really popular. The only real thing I can see is like people just keep coming back to it to keep playing. And, you know, maybe it is an addiction, but it, you know, it's, it's fun. I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really put Minecraft here, but I feel like the only real argument that this case like hinges on is the fear of missing out stuff or just like skins in general. Like when you look at games like Call of Duty, like you boot up the game and it's like advertising right now, like, oh, Nicki Minaj is in the game. Kevin Durant's in the game. Like all these people are in the game. Like, you know, it's that I could see that being like an addiction, like you being shown that every day, you'll probably be tempted. You'll be tempted, not saying you will, you'll be tempted to spend something, but uh, we'll see where it goes. OK, so let's get into the next story. Video game firms found to have broken own UK industry rules on loot boxes. Government criticized over decision to let companies self-regulate gambling style features after experts find numerous breaches. The UK government's decision to let technology companies self-regulate gambling style loot boxes and video games has been called into question after some of the developers put in charge of new industry guidelines broke their own rules. So this was just this was just bound to happen. You have like this. This is like the meme where it's like we have investigated ourselves and we found no wrongdoing. Like it, like, can you really expect these companies to set their own guidelines um and in this article they go on to talk about ea and just reading that like they're saying ea should be the role model right but when we think of ea we know for sure that is not the gaming industry role model on how gambling should be especially when you take a look at their games like madden and fifa like it's it's really bad obviously this is for the uk i don't think america really cares about the gambling in the games my, my they might even condone it but uh i i don't know this one's like a touchy subject but like if there was a way for them to prevent gambling or loot boxes and games i think i would really like that but at the same time that is like once you get the government fiddling with stuff like in the gaming world, that that's like it, you just don't want that because it's going to start off as, OK, we took the loot boxes out. Now we're going to do this. Now we're going to take this out. Now we're going to take this out. So you probably don't want the government messing around with games or in general making decisions for games because it's 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 not going to turn out well. But uh, if there was a way to just get rid of loot boxes any type of gambling and video games, I think I'd be down for that just because I, I feel like it doesn't really serve a purpose. It's not fun. It, it just ruins games. Everyone tries to copy it. it it's just it's just not great. Uh, I just not a fan of it at all. And if there's any way to get rid of it, I think I would jump on that immediately just because it's it's really just ruined gaming. OK, so let's get into our last story, which is the developers of Dead Cells. Darkest Dungeon, where we talked about them earlier, Slay the Spire are launching their own Triple I Gaming Awards. So that's what they're calling it, the Triple I. It's a digital showcase for Triple I games, which is basically indie games, which is really cool. Um, we have all these showcases that, you know, that they really show off the Triple A games and stuff like that. They really like harp on those. And that's not bad, but something that's like designed for indie games is really cool, you know? It might inspire passion with other developers to get their, you know, their games on here. Um, but it's supposed to be April 10th, um, 45 minutes of bangers. That's what it says. 45 minutes of bangers. So uh, I'm kind of excited. I really like to see indie games do well. Independent games do well. I think uh, it's, it's just good for the game industry, especially with all these industries just being bought up by Microsoft or Sony or Embracer uh, and just like not having the best of times because they get bought out. They do all these layoffs and the company is a shell of its former self. So I'm hoping this can inspire passion kind of in this the gaming industry and, you know, some overall hype to just gamers all around. I think it'd be tight. That's all the gaming news I have for today. Let me know what you think about the Darkest Dungeon devs saying the gold rush is over. Epic Games isn't funding indie devs anymore. 
Let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about this Triple I initiative that's going to showcase all indie games. And let me know what you think about Xbox putting Steam on the Xbox Series X. That is crazy. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you thought it was awful, give it a thumbs down. Either or is great. Leave a comment on how you feel about the video, what I need to improve on, what I need to do, because we're trying to learn out here. This is Logic Motion, and I'll see you next time. Take care.